attack on the scene. So next order of business for the 2J mower is uh, working on steering. And I had this fancy cutout notch here in the chassis for the steering knuckle thing here. And uh, I made sure I had room for this U-joint and this half of the U-joint and this part. Well, I didn't spin it all the way around. So this part of it solidly runs into the frame there. So I'm uh, working on making the steering column here, steering shaft, and uh, I've just got this piece of pipe here sitting on there just so I can kind of visualize where it's gonna go. And seeing as how this thing's part rat rod, we obviously have to have a camshaft as part of the steering column because, you know, that's how rat rods do. But anyway, so these are camshafts out of a 1978 Honda Goldwing. And this is a bogey wheel off of a Yamaha Phaser snowmobile that I have a bunch of extras of these and the bearings in them are handy. So as it turns out, it's exactly the same size bearing, which is good because I need a carrier bearing for the steering shaft before I do the other set of U-joints. So there we go, carrier bearing. Test fitting, I'll probably actually cut this down and use this cup and then just weld another piece of aluminum to it to where, wherever I'm gonna make the bracket. But I also need to adapt this end or weld it to a U-joint, but I want the bearing to be removable, of course, because it'd be stupid to have a non-removable bearing. So I took this little piece here, which fits in this piece of U-joint that I have and is length adjustable if need be. So I put it in the lathe, straightened it out and added some threads so there was already threads in the end of this, so I threaded in a piece of bolt, and now that gets perfectly centered and nice and snug, so I can weld it on there without it uh, warping or being off-centered. So that's pretty cool. And then this piece, I'll make a little uh, sleeve thing that'll, once I figure out the length, I'll make a little sleeve that'll go over this and over that, and then weld on so that it's nice and straight as well. And then uh, here we'll have, of course, this other U-joint, and then another short section of shaft, and then another U-joint, and then that'll be, that piece will go to the steering wheel. So, getting closer to having functional steering, which is a very important step. <laughs> this end all welded on. This goes on there now. And this is all attached. It's not welded yet, but I got the uh, fitment nice and tight. So it um, held nice and snug there. And then I'll just weld both sides of that. And then that'll all be one piece. And then I've got my bearing on here with a trimmed down version of that bogey wheel, which is now just a housing for it. And now I'm working on mounting that to this plate here. So I'm just gonna use these two starter bolts to hold the starter on and bolt the engine and trans together. And I'm using some of my aluminum street sign scraps because this is aluminum, so 
I need to make the bracket out of aluminum so I can weld to it. So uh, the plan is to, you know, start with that, get it tacked, and then add in some bracing and stuff, and then we'll have a steering column bearing mount bracket. closer to steering here. Um, got this mount done. It took longer than I wanted it to because I didn't have very thick aluminum to work with in my scrap pile, so uh, I had to make it strong by reinforcing stuff, but I think it came out pretty good. And uh, now I can move on to this part of it. I've just got a temporary bits connecting all of this so I can figure out where I want the steering wheel. Next step is to find some bearings or something to use to support this section and then mount that and then uh, be able to sit on it and drive-ish or you know roll down a hill anyway and not crash into things which is the goal. using the other camshaft from the 78 Goldwing for another section of the steering column. So, I've uh, got a couple of idler pulleys for a timing belt from a Subaru, and um, I've got this turned down to fit inside those. So that one goes on that end. This one goes on this end, nice and snug. Maybe a little too snug. And then the steering call or steering wheel, I turn the end down to fit that, drill the hole in it. And we've got ourselves another section of steering column made. We got steering. Well, sort of. I mean, you turn the steering wheel and it turns the wheels. It's a little bit tricky to hold it stable at the moment, but it's all together and it works. And we've got plenty of range of where we can put this thing. Yeah, so now I just have to make a steering column support that comes up from the frame probably and uh, welds onto these things. Steering system's coming right along. Uh, it's it's all attached, if not uh, sturdy yet. So um, I put these two pieces of the original console together and tacked them to this giant hunk of angle iron here just so that I could set it across this without it falling through. And now I've got it tacked in place. Um, so I'm just gonna figure out how to, uh, how I wanna mount this down to here or wherever and then also some more mounts for this as well.
that's the steering pretty much done. I got uh, it all hooked up. I made this um, crazy looking bracket to hold up this bearing. Um, the dimple die holes are for strength and to make it look cool, even though it's a part that will never be seen when it's complete. But you know, that's how we do. Just like the camshaft. You have to like, even now, you have to look in here to see that that's a camshaft, but you know, I'll know and you guys will know. And you know, that's all that matters. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's pretty easy to steer considering that the power steering isn't hooked up yet uh, and it's sitting still. So that's, that's good news. Um, obviously there's more to be done with this console. Uh, like, you know, close in these holes here, close in the front, tie it in with the hood, but all of that'll happen later. Um, when we have the hood mounted and the, everything else done, uh, basically. And, but in the future, this will also be a good spot to hide stuff like the ECU for the engine and whatever else, little bits of electronics, little doodads and stuff can all fit into this box and be hidden so that it, you know, looks more old and crazy. We've just got a few more reinforcements to do to make this thing, you know, mostly rigid. Uh, mainly the back section here uh, is really just welded on here and here on each side. So I'm going to add in some braces and supports. And then uh, I think it'll be time to take it out and roll it down a hill and see how it rides. Today's going to be all about reinforcing this frame. So from about the steering column forward, it's quite sturdy because it's all bolted to the engine. And so that, and it's wider up there. So those two things mean that it's got a lot more rigidity, but I'll show you why we gotta do some reinforcing in the back here. Because normally when you jack up one side of a vehicle, the suspension just compresses. But in this case right now, that's entirely frame twist. If you look at the frame from back here, you can just watch it twist as you jack it up. It'll be easier to see as I lower it down as it untwists. So we gotta stop that from happening before we can ever drive this thing. So given that we wanna roll it down the hill and see how it rolls, uh, gonna work on fixing that. The other way that it's not very strong is the back end right here is not strong in this axis. So if one traction, one tire were to have significantly more traction than the other, it'd wanna twist that way. Um, so that one's really easy to fix. I'm going to just add a plate that welds in all the way along this edge up to this corner that's already reinforced and then diagonally down somewhere in there or down to there, something like that, which will also fill in this hole of potential leg mashery. reinforcing but it's already significantly sturdier really all I did is plate the bottom here under the transmission as far forward as I could and that piece is just tacked in it's you know many tacks but it's still just tacked and then I made this plate here kind of to fill in the little notch in the frame and to just you know stiffen it up because like this part matters the most because it's where the back part attaches to this section so this chunk adds a ton of strength this way, and then surprisingly, I just tested by jacking it up, and it still twists a little bit, but that tire now comes off the ground with the same level of lift on this side as we were doing before, so much more rigid. Um, and I'm gonna keep going with the reinforcement, but before it gets dark, which is early around here, at least this time of year, uh, it's time to take it out and roll it around and um, see if we can't pull it up the hill and uh, roll it back down again. So at first, to test out the steering of the 2J mower, we're just gonna drag it up the hill and ride it back down, but we can do better than that. This is Ethan's diesel swap synchro. We have a video of that happening in the bio, if you're into that. And he's gonna hooky bob me <laughs> on the 2J mower. 
Think it's a decent idea? Yeah, should be good. I mean, we're not gonna go too fast because the uh, mower doesn't have any brakes, but now I'm looking to see if I can find a shackle to hook up the toe strap. Just the second we get something close enough to do something with, we are on it. <laughs> hey, this seat has a lot of built-in suspension. It's gonna be total Formula One driving and seeing the wheels like this. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll start out slow. All right. Ethan's definition of starting slow isn't most people's definition. <laughs> Man, taking this thing out on the racetrack, climbing up Pike's Peak. I think I lost the tack on the seat. <laughs> oh, no. oh yeah, he's getting speed now. Oh yeah! Oh, the seat is off entirely. Oh, man. That was a solid attempt. The steering feels really nice. There's definitely still enough flex in the chassis to notice, even over the small bumps here. But now Ethan's gonna take it down the hill and get a feel for it himself. Yeah, for, you know, a couple seconds. So I'm gonna get you rolling and then I'm gonna run. That's good. Yeah, um, this thing uh, doesn't have brakes, so I can't just like hold it halfway on the hill and then go. It's also heavier than a power wheel, so I can't just like rock back and forth to get going. I can't reach any of the tires to push them, so yeah, I'll need a push to get going. All right. Almost. Oh, there we go. We're going. We're going. <laughs> We're going. How'd it feel? Well, you know, aside from the suspension being way too stiff and my seat falling off halfway down the hill, it feels good. You can see the, sh I mean, I'm sure you noticed this, but you can see the front tire is actually moving the suspension a bit. Of course, the shocks aren't attached to anything, so it's just bouncy springs, but you know, it's, uh, it's something. But yeah, the steering's really easy when you're rolling, even without power steering, so that's gonna be nice. But yeah. Well, I guess let's pull it back into the shop. There it goes. I mean, it's got power and it slides. It doesn't really donut. 